Hello, and thank you, Jar, for having me here. I'm Maya Pietinen, and I'm a postdoc at the Institute of Virology at the University of Zurich. Tonight, I will talk about the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine 2020 that was awarded for the discovery of hepatitis C virus. First, I would like to summarize the three main topics that are the liver, blood, and viruses. And I hope that in next slides you will learn how these three are actually connected. Let's begin by defining what is hepatitis. It's an inflammation of the liver that can range from a short term to a lifelong disease. Often hepatitis is asymptomatic, but when symptoms appear, they include, for example, abdominal pain and fever. Unfortunately, hepatitis often causes a chronic state that can then lead to liver cirrhosis and then to liver cancer that can be fatal. Let's then think about what can cause hepatitis. Toxic substances like abuse of alcohol is one of the reasons. However, hepatitis viruses are the most common cause of hepatitis and at the same time they are also the most common cause of liver cirrhosis and cancer. And it has been approximated that these viruses cause about 1.4 million deaths per year. There are actually five different types of hepatitis viruses that are completely unrelated but cause the same disease. Hepatitis A and E are those infections usually come from contaminated food or water, while these three hepatitis viruses are blood-borne pathogens. Hepatitis A and E they don't usually cause a chronic disease, and there are also vaccines against these two hepatitis viruses. So actually, these blood-borne pathogens are a bigger concern. So let's focus on those. Hepatitis D can infect only persons who already have hepatitis B. So let's exclude that one as well for now. And now we are left with two hepatitis viruses. Good news are that there is also a vaccine against hepatitis B. The first one was developed already in 1969 by Baruch Bloomberg, who was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1976. And this discovery, or discovery of hepatitis B virus, then made it possible to develop blood tests to screen blood products for this virus and then to exclude positive blood donors. However, in the 70s, blood transfusions still remained very dangerous, even compared to Russian roulette, because there were so many cases of blood transfusion-related hepatitis. So there was still something going on that wasn't quite understood. And that was actually the driving force for the discovery of this hepatitis C virus. And this discovery was made by three scientists, Walter, Hutton and Rice, who were jointly awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine 2020. And these scientists, they both discovered and characterized this new virus, this new hepatitis virus. And their pioneering work has made it possible that nowadays we have blood tests to identify both hepatitis B and C, and our blood products should be safe. Equally important, importantly, their work has also resulted in the development of very effective drugs 
that actually cure hepatitis C. Okay, so in next slides, I will walk you through the steps that solved this mystery of blood-borne hepatitis. So, in the 1970s, Harvey Alter was studying hepatitis patients and their blood samples. In one of his fundamental experiments, he took some blood or blood serum from these patients and then he injected that to chimpanzees. And, well, unfortunately, these chimpanzees then developed those same symptoms as these patients. So based on this, Alter could conclude that there must be another infectious agent that is causing hepatitis besides hepatitis B virus. However, it took one more decade before this unknown virus was actually identified. And that was done by Michael Houghton in the 1980s. He actually succeeded in the isolation of the virus genome, again, from infected chimpanzees. And based on that genetic code, this virus was now identified. And surprisingly, it wasn't related to those hepatitis viruses that were already known, but it belonged to the virus family called Flaviviridae. And these Flaviviruses, they, they also include many pathogens, like yellow fever virus and dengue virus. And as at the time of this discovery or identification, hepatitis A and B were already known, this virus was named then as hepatitis C. Another major breakthrough at the 1980s was the first diagnostic test for hepatitis C virus. And that was developed together by Alter and Houghton. So finally, it was possible to identify all blood products that either contain hepatitis B or C, and to make those blood products safe. However, there was still one, one piece of the puzzle missing, and that piece was provided by Charles Rice. Again, one, one more decade later, in the late 1990s, Charles Rice was able to engineer the whole hepatitis C virus genome in the test tube. And then he actually put only this viral genome into chimpanzees that once again developed the symptoms of hepatitis. So this was now the final proof that hepatitis C virus alone can cause hepatitis and it can also persist long, uh, long term and will raise this antibody defense. Okay, so what has then happened during the last 20 years? So all three scientists, Alter, Hutton and Rice, and also many other hepatitis C researchers, have been able to reveal many important mechanisms about how the virus actually replicates within the cell. And this info information has been really important when um, drugs have been both uh, designed and screened against hepatitis C virus. And all that work has resulted into this. So nowadays we have very effective and safe combination drugs that actually can cure hepatitis C virus infection in more than 95% of patients. So now we can, can come back to this one again. And although a vaccine is still unfortunately missing against hepatitis C virus, we do have very good blood tests to make safe blood products 
and we do have very effective antiviral drugs to cure hepatitis C. So, as a summary, the work done by Alter, Hutton and Rice, it has really saved and improved lives of millions of people. Okay, now when that's said, uh, it's also important to take a look to the current situation and to the future. So it is approximated that currently there are more than 300 million people worldwide who have either hepatitis B and or C infection. If we think about a group of 25 people, that would mean that one of them has hepatitis C or B. These two viruses also still remain the main cause of liver cancer and transplants. So why is that? Um, one of the main reasons is that diagnostics and treatment are not widely enough available. It has been approximated that only about 20% of all those people who have hepatitis C infection are actually aware of their infection. And this is mostly because those hepatitis C infections are often asymptomatic until the liver has been severely damaged. And then about this 20%, unfortunately only about 15% are really treated. So that will result in those high, high numbers of deaths per year. And, and that's why hepatitis viruses still remain a major threat. And actually the World Health Organization has set a goal to eliminate viral hepatitis by 2030. This goal, or in order to meet this goal by 2030, it includes many measures. One of the most important ones are childhood vaccinations. But at the same time, it's also really important to improve blood and injection safety and also to improve diagnostics and treatment services, especially in, in low- and mid-income countries. Furthermore, different syringe and needle programs for injection drug users are important because among, among them, hepatitis is still, still a major issue. But if all these measures are done, and the goal is, is achieved by 2030, that would mean that at least 7 million lives will be saved. Okay, so now we are again here where we started. And I hope that you have now learned how these three main topics, the liver, blood and viruses are related and I also hope that in the future hepatitis viruses will be completely excluded from blood and from the liver. I hope you have enjoyed the talk and I would like to thank you for your attention and wish that you have a nice evening.